What's up, Red Nation? It's Brian from How Radiology Works. We're gonna be talking about signal to noise and contrast to noise ratio in your medical images. If you haven't checked out our other videos, we have one where we kind of gave the definition of what's the mean and what's a standard deviation, how you can use those. We also had another one that's a little more sophisticated than this where we talk about the ROSE model. So this is the one that's kind of right in between. We had some requests to put up this material on the YouTube. We've had it on the website. I really wanted to put this on YouTube as well so that everyone can see it. And the idea here is that our images are going to be a combination. You can think of a combination of like your perfect noise free image. And then there's going to be noise in the background of your image. And what we're talking about today is mostly quantum type noise. We also have another video we'll link up in the description below, which is about why we have noise in our x-ray images. It has to do with the fact that these are all statistical measurements, but you can check that one out if you're wondering why do we have noise in our x-ray images. So this is a image of my little Bitmoji, and this is a noise free case, as you can see here. And then as you go in this direction and then down here and then over in this direction, we're going to higher and higher noise scenarios. So once you get down to this scenario here, you can kind of tell that I have hair. You can see my face very clearly still. You can kind of tell that I have hair, hair but you can't see any details in the hair up there. And so depending on what your task is, you can see that your dose level might be different or your ability to read through the noise to accomplish that task might be different. If your task was, is there a Bitmoji of Brian in there, then this is gonna be a very reasonable dose to do that. But if you need to see something in my hair, for instance, then you know that this dose is not enough and you're gonna to need to have essentially a higher dose, which will give you a lower noise in your X-ray and CT images. The relationship we'll cover in more detail in other videos, but as the dose goes up, the noise is going to go down. So you can see here in this proportional relationship, the noise goes inversely, like the square root of the dose. So as the dose continues to go up, the noise is gonna to continue to go down. So this is a phantom we often use in CT imaging, where you can see different lesions and how well they stand out from the background. These lesions here are actually 1% different in their attenuation values for our CT image, and we call that 10 Hounsfield units. And then these up here are actually five Hounsfield units or 0.5%. And over here, we're talking about 0.3% or three Hounsfield units in comparison for those lesions with respect to the background. And the question is, if you had a relatively small lesion, which is relatively low contrast, would you be able to differentiate that in your CT image? These are all pixels in our image or voxels in our 3D image. You could think about, for instance, drawing a line in your image. And if we draw a line, you'll have some area in the background and then you'll have a lesion and some area in the background. So if we do that, you can see here, we've drawn a line through an image and you can see this is the background area. This is the area of one contrast, then the background area, and then another area that has, again, positive contrast. And if we talk about the definition of our signal to noise or the definition of our contrast to noise, the signal to noise is actually gonna be the difference of the signal. So the average signal here in comparison with the noise in the background. So the average signal here then divided by the relative noise in the background. The signal here is approximately 150. If we took the average here, Signal here is approximately 150, and the background values have a standard deviation of around, you can visually see that here. We also talked about the definition of the mean and the standard deviation in, in that last video, it's in the description. If the values are 150 and 10, then the SNR of this is going to be 15. So the signal to noise for this measurement is going to be 15. Then the question is, what would be the contrast to noise? So again, with the exact same data, now the contrast, we're actually more concerned with the ability of the system to differentiate this object with respect to the background. So now we wanna look at the difference between the signal. 
So the contrast is the difference between the signal here and here. And then again, contrast to noise, again, we're gonna be dividing by that standard deviation of the noise in the background again. Now the contrast to noise here is gonna be, this is about 150, this is about 100. So the contrast is about 50 here, and then the noise value is the same there of about 10. So the contrast to noise is going to be 50 divided by 10 or about five. So you can see for the same data, this is just giving you a visual picture of the fact that the contrast to noise and the signal to noise are actually measuring things that are a little bit different. And a lot of times in our medical images, contrast to noise is actually going to be the more valuable representation because we're often looking to measure an object with respect to a noisy background. If you haven't seen our very first video on CNR, definitely check that one out with the definitions of mean and standard deviation. If you've already seen that and you're comfortable with this one, then check out our video on the Rose model and how the contrast actually matters as well as the size of the objects in your images.